Welcome back, my name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I guess. If you're new here, welcome. I have an awful garbage filthy mouth where sometimes, just sometimes, I tend to use the word fuck as a comma. I know it's disgusting and I should be stopped, but I'm not because I'm seeking professional help, but that's really not true. If you're not into that or weird stuff in general, this is not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here. No harm, no foul. But I'll remember our time fondly. If you wanna jump straight to the overall review of the collection, I'll leave a time code down below. Feel free to jump ahead. Y'all, I cut my hair. <laughs> I'm still kind of getting used to it. I know a lot of you babies were like, oh my god, I love your long hair. I hated it. I hated it with a passion. It breaks easily and when it breaks, it forms into tesseracts, which tries to take over the world. I'm not into it. So I got it cut this weekend and I'm still kind of uh, getting used to it because I don't remember what it was like to kind of have this, you know, like, whew, short hair. So if I keep flipping it around, I apologize. I just don't know what to do with it. And, and uh, someone put the heat on <laughs> in the building. It's June, so I feel like I'm kind of like half sweating, half touching my hair, half running the air conditioner in the living room in hopes that it would come into the bedroom. So today's a great day. I love today. Anyway, I'm gonna keep this short and simple because I have to uh, go to work and I need to film this before my meeting, so yay. Zoom is a magical place. And I've had some fun meetings in the past month, you know, given our current situation. Now my personal favorite is when someone is being called on, when they're clearly not paying attention. It's like being back in school. It's the gift that keeps on giving and my constant entertainment during these boring, boring ass meetings. However, sometimes I have challenging phone calls and I need to remember that people can see my face and vice versa. And I would say I'm pretty good for the most part for hiding my disgust on most things. I consider it a true gift. So the other day I was on a call with someone that I don't really interact with too much, but every time our paths cross, it's pure magic. Let's call him Rob, all right? Rob has a very expressive face. He's the type of person that probably has the most expressive of expressions, I guess if that's even a thing, to have in these conference calls. Like he is a man of a thousand faces. It's so expressive, I often think in his past life, he was a mime. If he dressed like the Hamburglar, I wouldn't think twice. To give you a good example, one time we had a meeting when we were back in the office and it happened to be a lunchtime meeting and the facilitator of the meeting was like, hey guys, we got you some pizza. We're gonna break, we're gonna bring in some lunch for you guys and then we're gonna get back at it. When he heard pizza, he literally did this. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm actually rubbing my belly. So I'm gonna rub it up here. <laughs> Cause we ain't trying to angle it down that low. You know what I'm talking about? Let's just say this is my stomach. I wish. He did that to everybody that was in the meeting. He would lock eyes with them and just, you know, rub his belly and mimic as if he was munching on something. So this is the type of gentleman that I'm dealing with. I'll give you another example. There was a meeting one time where the general vibe was like, oh no, this is not gonna be good. Everybody kind of like, you know, was like, mm, you know, just kind of like shaking their head, you know, the classic like, ah, oh, <sighs> you know, like everybody does in, <laughs> in a meeting. He took it one step further and just did this. I imagine this was a pitchfork. That, I, that's the only thing I could think of. Cause I, I was like, what is, <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> but he just reminded me of like old cartoony, like, hmm. Get off my farm. Like that's what he reminded me of. So yeah. With that said, I don't have a lot of meetings with him, but when I do, it's an absolute pleasure. Obviously we can't meet in person because you know, this. So we have a lot of meetings in Zoom. Anyway, so this meeting had about like six or so people on it. So we all have like a little blocks on the screen. It's like a fucked up Brady Bunch. And someone in the meeting, which that's another story for another day, said probably the most stupidest thing I've ever fucking heard in my life. They said, Well, have you ever seen a clock upside down? make sense if he was talking about clocks, but he wasn't. <laughs> so I don't really understand how that analogy had to do with anything else, but whatever, I digress. But everybody else in the meeting was like, 
I guess we all just collectively was like, well, just not along. We'll not make him feel bad about this decision. But then there was Rob. Rob just tilted his head and looked up into the corner. And I swear for the remainder of the meeting, I would have assumed they had a bad connectivity issue and froze because he just was really just staring at whatever the fuck was in the corner. So someone finally in the meeting like asked him a question and it broke his trance. And oh God, he slowly turned his head, looked into the camera and said, I have never seen a clock upside down. I don't know why this made me laugh the way that it did, but I was laughing so hard that I was literally crying, okay? I spit water all over my fucking keyboard, almost ruined it, by the way. And the funniest part is I was the only one laughing. <laughs> so everyone thought I was crazy. And I am, I am. I'm professional, I know. It was the funniest thing I've seen in the last few weeks. And the last few weeks have been stressful to say the least. Anyway, let me know down below if you're having Zoom meetings and uh, how that's been going for you. Cause so far mine have been hilarious. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the new Kaleidos Escape collection, which I don't have in front of me, but it really came in this awesome PR kit, which I know I say this all the time, I don't really get a lot of PR, but from the few brands that do send me PR, of course I love and adore them all. But this has to be the coolest thing that I have ever received. I'll put a picture of it um, up on the top and it's currently right now in my living room because I kind of want to put at least some of the kind of cardboard packaging back into it and just you know keep it because this this is as good as it's gonna get, baby. <laughs> no brands ever gonna send me my face with some Benefit mascara. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I don't need that. Fuck that shit. I'm already a narcissist. I don't need to actually. Actually, maybe that would be cool. In today's video, I'm gonna break down everything in this collection and let you know if I like it, if I don't like it, because even though it was gifted to me by the wonderful people of Kaleidos Makeup, I'm still gonna give you my honest opinion because um, I can't be bought. So the first product we're gonna talk about is the Soft Serve Makeup Sponges. And the two sponges come in this adorable little package. And I personally love this package because it just, you know, reminds me of food. <laughs> It reminds me of Cold Stone or Carvel. It reminds me of a more simpler time, but I really love this component. This retails for $10, so for $10 you get two different sponges. I used one sponge in this video. I actually used the green one, which is, you know, a little bit dirty as you can see. I have not used the purple one, but if it's anything like this, it's gonna be fine. I'm happy to say that these sponges are really, really nice. They kind of remind me of a mix between Real Techniques and Eco Tools, but they have the consistency of a paw paw sponge. I know, I know. These are super soft sponges, and of course, and when you add water, much like a gremlin, they get bigger. I wouldn't say that they double in size, but I would say it's it's pretty big. She's a pretty big bitch. Honestly, I'm very pleasantly surprised how this reminded me of a Shop Miss A sponge because that is a sponge that I literally scream from the rooftops to get because they are about $1.55 a piece. So I love that this is pretty much on par with that sponge. While I will say, while these sponges are great and they work really well, two for $10 versus a pack of, I think like six Shop Miss A sponges for $8, you could do the math. However, the only thing I would say sets the sponges apart is the shape of the sponge. And that's what Shop Missé lacks. Shop Missé, I feel like, has a couple of different variations, but they don't have something that looks like this. And I really, really enjoy this kind of a sponge because I love that there's a nice little edge there. I'm able to place my concealer with ease and blend it out nicely. I really, really love this edge and this edge the best. So yeah, I would say this one is the true standout, especially considering how many sides it has. I love it. The next product is the Tone Activator Eye Primer. So this product retails for about $10 as well. And you know, me, I could really care less about eye primers. I like what I like. And I usually find that most eye primers are bullshit. I'm looking at you, Urban Decay. Moral of the story, I like what I like. And what works for me the best is NARS Soft Matte Concealer or Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Base. I have dabbled with some MAC Paint Pot 
and I have had P. Louise, and those two primers are okay, but they're not the end all be all in my opinion. So with that said, I was very, very hesitant about trying this because I was like, eh, it's probably not gonna really work for me, but uh, whatever. While I can say that I like this product better than most eyeshadow primers that I have tried, I'm not in love with it. And it's because this oxidizes the shit out of my eyes. This beige color makes my eyes look dirty and ultimately making the eyeshadow look darker. It sucks because I actually really love the consistency of this product. I felt like it was it did a really nice job coating my lid. I noticed that it had a nice like slight tackiness to it. I was able to blend out eyeshadows with ease. Like I didn't have any problem putting product on top of it. It's just I didn't like the overall results when I was done. The other thing that's kind of annoying too is that the packaging, I think the primary is actually a little bit liquidy. I think it just like leaks into this. That kind of sucks. This primer was very comfortable to wear unlike the e.l.f. putty primer that felt like it was concrete drying on my fucking lid. So yeah. So like I mentioned, it's leaps and bounds better than most primers that I have tried. I just don't like the oxidation of it. I would be interested in trying this product again if they release lighter versions of it, but I wouldn't reach for it if this was my only option. So hopefully Kaleidos can make lighter versions. I really did like how things looked. I just hated how dark it looked. Kind of annoying. The next product is the Lucid Lip, which is this little boy right here. So this product retails for about $16 and it's a gloss that is like a frosted magenta with violet sparkles. It's very, very pretty. This gloss is thick, thick with two C's. It's not sticky. It doesn't bleed out into the corners to kind of give you that pie eating contest look that we all fucking love. So that's great. It has a very light opacity. So you could actually wear it on its own or you could put it over liner or lipstick, which is kind of what I prefer. Even with this product having sparkles, it has a very, very smooth texture, which is awesome. My only, only complaint, which is a big one, unfortunately, is that this gloss is very heavy. What I love about gloss in general is the idea of something being very, very lightweight and feeling like you don't have anything on your lips. I gravitate towards formulas like that. This is just, it's thick. She's thick. I feel her. It feels weighted. I feel uncomfortable. I don't like it. It's not my cup of tea. It's a shame because I really love the color of it. I think it's like really unique and the sparkles aren't too much. Like they're a light wash of sparkles. So it doesn't feel like you're going to a fucking rave. Like it's beautiful. It's just, I don't like how heavy it is. So with that said, I think out of everything in this collection, this might be my least favorite thing. Um, yeah, sorry, this just didn't really work for me that well. The next two products are the Lo-Fi Duo Blushers. Each blush duo comes out to about $18 each, or you could buy them both for $32. The packaging is adorable, but incredibly misleading. I feel like when you're looking at just the cover of it, you're assuming that these are going to be POC friendly, but they kind of appear to be better suited for those with fair to medium skin tones. Now I'm going to link down two videos in the description box. One from Alicia from Kinky Sweat, if you don't know who she is, which she's adorable by the way. She's our Pat McGrath queen. Her video is important because she actually emailed the brand about these blush duos and it includes the brand's response, which I feel like is very important. And I'm also going to link down Karen Harris's video. And if you don't know Karen, Karen is, she's just our adorable girl from the Midwest. Karen includes swatches on deeper skin and it's actually really adorable because the swatches are on her dad. I love a man who makes a commitment. I really do. It's really, really cute. Anyway, so if you are someone that has deeper skin, I would recommend checking out her channel and they're both fantastic ladies and they make wonderful content. So definitely go check them out. Now with that said, I actually really like these blushes. I really enjoyed them. Now you get two shades in each duo, the top one being the duochrome blush and the bottom being a matte blush. The matte blush is very, very rich in pigment so a little bit goes a long way. And the duochrome blush, it's just fucking cool. It's different. With both of these products, I felt like the blendability was great. The longevity was really good. I had no problem applying the product. It didn't sit on my skin weird and melted and blended in beautifully with everything else. It didn't emphasize any sort of texture or pores or blah, blah, blah. It really worked well with my skin type. So I was very, very pleased with that. And my skin type, by the way, is pretty much like normal to dry. Bordering more dry though, because um, I'm living in a bubble with the air conditioner cranked down to 60. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, the duochrome blush, like I mentioned, is fucking cool. It's cool. I love it. It's fucking adorable. However, I like using it more as a highlighter though, as opposed to a blush. I feel like as a highlighter, it just, it just speaks to me. It gives you that intergalactic slut feel that I love so very much. On 
honestly, I'm just done with this world at this point. I'm ready for the aliens to come take me. And now I'll be in style when I'm trying to fuck their leader. When using both of the products together, I find that they're really gorgeous. And it kind of reminds me of a sparklier version of the Cover Effects blush duos, except, you know, obviously way more sparkly and at half the price. <laughs> Now don't get me wrong, they're not dupes by any means. But if you're looking for something a bit more jazzier, I would recommend checking this product out. It's pretty cool. The next are the highlighters, and there are actually four highlighters in this collection. The one I'm holding in my hand though is Diamond Dasher. So pretty. I love, I love these highlighters. Now in this collection, there are four highlighters. One of them is the reformulated Ray Rider highlighter, which personally, I actually like the older formula, so I didn't really understand why it was reformulated. But when I noticed watching the old one compared to the new one, I did notice that the new one is definitely a lighter pale champagne color compared to the older version, which is a little bit deeper. So just something to note. Consistency wise, they still feel the same, but I just like it a little bit lighter because it just works on my uncooked chicken face. As for the newer highlighters, I love these. These are fantastic. These are not your everyday highlighters by any means. This is not your mother's highlighters. These are definitely slutty, slutty, slutty highlighters. It speaks to the alien slut that lives inside of me. The texture of each of the highlighters, I would say they have a little bit of like a texture or a little bit of grit to them, but when applied to the face, it goes on very seamlessly, very, very beautiful. And they all have a really, really good longevity. There is a bit of sparkle when it comes to these highlighters, in particular Diamond Dash, and Moon Cruiser definitely has some glitter to it, so just keep that in mind. But it's not chunky or messy by any means, but you can see some sparkles when you turn your head a little bit. I like these highlighters because I feel like they sit perfectly on the skin. And for something that has some sparkle to it, I like that it doesn't emphasize any sort of texture or sit in my pores weird. It just looks really, really nice on my face and I like it. What I love about these highlighters is that they layer over your blush and bronzer perfectly, but they can also layer on top of each other. So for today's look, I actually combined the blush topper from the duo and I included a little bit of Moon Cruiser towards the bottom to kind of give you that duochrome effect, which I know is a little bit hard to tell with these lights, but in person you can kind of see that there's like a blue going into a pink shift and oh God, I feel so slutty. I love it. What can I say? I love that Smurf splooge effect. My only complaint with the highlighters is that I prefer the matte packaging more. The two new highlighters comes in the tin. They're fine, but I just kind of feel like the packaging just looks a little bit cheaper compared to the matte packaging. Also, you kind of have to be a little bit careful with the cover of the product. You see it kind of sits on like this hinge right over here. This hinge isn't the most sturdiest, I would say, in this component or any of the highlighters. I have a couple of them where it actually has the little screws or whatever the fuck it's holding it together has um, kind of fell out or whatever. So the top actually comes off completely from the component. I'm still able to close it, obviously, but it's just something that, you know, maybe Kaleidos could think about having a little bit more of a sturdier package. My preference lies with the matte. I just love the texture of this one so much more uh, than the tin one. So anyway, these are fucking fantastic. If you're looking for a sparkly slut look. This is it right here, sis. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about the Kaleidos Escape Pod eyeshadow palette. This eyeshadow palette retails for $42, first and foremost, until July 1st, $8.40 USD of each order, including the Escape Pod, will be donated to the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund. No code necessary. And I wanted to mention that because I think it's incredibly awesome that this brand is donating to a really good cause. And with that said, for $42, what exactly are you getting? This 15 pan palette comes in this adorable package which, you know, is a little bit on the thicker side compared to the other palettes that I purchased and received from this brand. And uh, yeah, she's a little thick. It definitely has some quarantine weight. And you know what? We don't judge here. We love her still. I love the packaging because it reminds me of like a little laptop in like a shitty like sci-fi cartoon. I think it's just really cute. Now when it comes to formula, Kaleidos is one of my favorite indie brands. And I would say that the formula has been pretty consistent from all the palettes that I own in my collection. However, in this palette, while I do enjoy it, I notice that the formula is a little bit different. I'm not entirely sure if the formula has officially changed or if they're just trying new things out. When I compare this to previous palettes, I feel like I have to build up the matte shadows. It's not the end of the world by any means. It's just a difference of this palette versus previous palettes. Now, what I like about the mattes are the neon shades. They are really fucking good. And usually neon shades are incredibly difficult to make. And often they usually build up very well, but as soon as you start blending, they just disappear. I found that the longevity was really good on them. I was able to build up and blend out with ease. I, I don't have anything bad to say about the neon shades. There is some light staining when it comes to the purple and pink shades. And of course, 
course, it takes about one to two days to not give you that someone shit on my pillow look, but whatever. I could live with that. So the indigo shade Exoplanet is a very unique color. It kind of reminds me of the old subculture palette where some of the shades in that palette, you just pack it on the outer lid. Sometimes it would just disappear within a matter of a couple of hours. Or if you tried to blend it out, you get this really harsh line that's just impossible to blend. And I kind of experienced that a little bit with that shadow, which was a little bit unfortunate. It sucks because no matter what primer I use, I kind of had the same result with it. So I don't know, it just, it sucks because it's such a pretty shade and it's a unique shade in my collection. So, eh, oh well. Everything else worked perfectly. One of my favorite shades in this palette is the shade Lo-Fi, which is like this beige color here. That shade acted as an eraser. So anytime I just wanted to kind of like soften the edges, especially with some of the more of the neon colors, I was able to use that shade and like blend it to create this beautiful like soft gradient. That's a fucking great shade, which is so funny because it's like the most boring out of the bunch, but it's the shade that you really need to use, especially when using the neon shades to kind of just not make it look like rainbow bright, just throw up all over your fucking face. So. I love it. The shimmers worked really, really well. For every look, I paired it with some glitter glue and I really like how everything stays into place. I didn't notice anything like falling or dropping throughout the day. I love that you can layer the shimmers on top of each other. They all work really, really well. None of the shimmers are kind of overpowering the next one with the exception of the greens, which I'll talk about in a second. But for the most part, I feel like they all work together so well. My only complaint other than that indigo shade not really working out is the color story. Now I appreciate a good funky color story. This is a color story that I gravitate towards. I love things that are like funky and weird. As someone who grew up in the 90s, I fucking love this. My only complaint though is that I feel like they could have taken some of the shades out of this palette. Now there are two green shades in particular, which by the way, I use both green shades. Fortunately, you can't tell the difference of which green shade I used. And um, I deepened the corner, the outer corner with some brown there uh, to try to give it some sort of dimension because initially when I had it, it just looked like I just used that one lime green shade. So eh, kind of sucks. The other two shadows that I feel like could have been left out is the orange shade and the red shade. In pan, they look slightly different, much like the green shadows. They look the same. I kind of wish that they took out two of those shades and replaced them with two other shades, maybe perhaps like a matte lime shade or a teal shade or even a fucking yellow shade. I don't know, something. That's my only complaint with this palette. In any case, it's solid. It works really well. I'm able to create actually a pretty decent amount of looks with this little palette. I think it's definitely perfect for the season that we're going into, which is, you know, pretty much stuck inside, but whatever. <laughs> I still think you can look really adorable having a rave on your couch with this palette. Is it my favorite palette? No, it's not my favorite, but what makes a palette worth checking out is the shimmers and the neon shades. Those two are so fucking good. And that is what sells this palette to me. So let me know down below how you feel about this collection. Again, I wanna say thank you so much to Kaleidos for sending me the whole collection. This little garbage person really, really appreciates it. With that said, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe subscribe button. It's free. And hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. The other social medias I'm probably going to delete because I'm never on them, unfortunately, because I'm just, you know, I'm too old. I, I can't. I, I don't understand how things work. I have a lovely Discord and of course a lovely Patreon. So if you are interested in joining this garbage person family, I invite you to check it out. And I want to say a special thank you to all my current patrons. I love your faces. Thank you so much for keeping this garbage boat afloat. If you're interested to know what is current on my face along with where you can get this collection and blah 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 everything will be listed in the description box below and i'll see you little pumpkins later bye